My name is Bill Gross. I grew up in uh, central New York State where I uh, played football, basketball, and baseball in high school. And uh, the, the day after I graduated, I went down and took exams to enter the cadet program, Air Force Cadet, because since I'd been knee high, I wanted to fly. But I didn't get called up, so I went to Albany where I had signed up originally and they told me that I might get take use of that time by enlisting in the Air Force and going to technical school, which I would attend if I was a cadet, so I uh, did that. Mm -hmm. And this was in the early fall of 1941. In September, I went in, went to radio school, which I preferred above mechanic, and <laughs> graduated and was assigned to the 93rd Bomb Group at Barstale field. I, ha I had a, a story uh, about General Andrews at Barstale Field. When he inspected us prior to our leaving, uh, I was on the end of the wrong end of the line among the radio operators, so he stopped by me. And uh, just before we left, we had issued, been issued leggings, which were part of the pre-war uniform, and we were told to bleach them white and keep them on a pack. But during the night when we were hanging them out to dry, somebody stole mine. So I'm standing in the line and we're ordered to say nothing except yes sir, no sir, no excuse sir. And uh, unfortunately he asked me where my leggings were and I said some son of a bitch stole them sir. <laughs> And he looked at me and he laughed. He said he was a son of a bitch. <laughs> and the <laughs> Colonel Timberlake, I thought he was going to choke. <laughs> we were uh, sent to Florida, Fort Myers, Florida, where we flew anti-submarine patrol. I had to forget my cadet. <laughs> Thing for a while, and uh, in August we were sent to Grenier Field, New Hampshire, where we received new airplanes and went overseas. On October the 9th, they, we flew our first mission to Lille, France. And that started uh, from first to last to April 16, 1943, when I was released from combat with 31 mission. Uh, Jeff and I finished up about the same time, I, I'm sure of that. And uh, in... Uh, I, I can't remember whether it was still in April or the 1st of May that uh, Jeff found out he was going home. They were going to fly General Andrews back and they were going home and be feeded as the first to finish 25 missions in the 8th Air Force. Well. I was sent to uh, uh, 
I guess R and R place that was br British. It was R E F place. We were in Southport, England, which is on the west coast. It was there that I heard that, about Jeff's crash, and Jeff had been taking all my photographs that I hadn't sent home with him, and he was going to see my mother. He had written her a letter to, I don't know whether he, well, he had written it by that time because he was dead, but th saying that he would bring them to her. It was a very upsetting time. Not only had I lost Jeff, but uh, when Sermons and I came back, which was around the middle of May, we came back to the base. The replacement crews had arrived for the group. And so we came back to the base and in the evening. So we went to the combat mess. In our combat mess, you had to walk up four or five stairs to get to. And we walked up the stairs and opened the door and we didn't know anybody. <laughs> to this day, that gets me. <laughs> we sat out on the steps crying like babies for a while. And, but that's, I couldn't tell you just, just when I knew, I knew, I knew. It was just part of the scenery over there that, I mean, you don't get used to it, but people disappear. I know, I know that they completed their missions a long time before the Memphis Belt, which at that time I had never heard of. When I first heard about the Memphis Belt, uh, uh, we just, <laughs> yeah, typical, to us, to, if you were a B-24 man, it was, uh, <laughs> publicity that uh, I think Boeing had the best PR people in the world who somehow <laughs> would always manage to upstage the B-24 no matter what. Uh, when you see pictures of a, of a 8th Air Force plane, it's usually a B-17. But we knew <laughs> we knew that most, almost everybody in our group that was still alive had done their missions long before that. I've never been around uh, that many good officers, good people in the rest of the time I was in the Air Force. I never, uh, most of our officers were West Pointers. Uh, the only one that wasn't was uh, Major Baker or Colonel Baker, who was in the, uh, been in the Air Force for a long time, and was a good pilot and a wonderful man, a born leader, and so was Timberlake. 